What's up, my movers and shakers? I'm Dave. This is MS Paints, and this is uh, another board build. For this board, I wanted to do something a little bit different. The foundations are still fundamentally the same in these things. I will change a few things. But for this one, I want to go 1920s HP Lovecraft, sort of crusty, dilapidated New England vibe. And this board will be ideal for my eventual plunge into Malifaux, but for the time being, I can probably play a lot of things on it. Primary inspirations were those two Lovecraft games released at the same time across multiple platforms, uh, Call of Cthulhu and The Sinking City. <laughs> Are you two friends? Yes. No. If you're a channel regular, you're probably fucking sick of me cutting wood by now. So I'm going to do all that while I'm talking. What I am going to do this time, rather than just kind of eyeball it all the way through, is look at the materials I've got, look at the things that Wayne and Games have sent me from War Cradle, map out and vaguely plan where everything's gonna go. Because normally when I do a board, I cut sidings and then, you know, make those really thin sidings part of the landforms. With this, I've got some really nice timber. I wanna cut straight into the timber and do the landforms with that, which means I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to plan first. So yeah, I can do that. So that's how I did the frame on this one. If you want to see a little bit more in depth on how I do board frames, check out my Lord of the Rings board build, which is there. But I think I'm going to crack on and get stuck into the fun shit. So side note, for some reason, I thought the Lord of the Rings board that I built was a four x four, even though it's a three x three. So assumed that four x four was completely manageable. This isn't the case. And this is now officially the biggest board that I've ever built. Shit. Cool, so I uh, had a nice weekend, got to go away and forget about this board, so that was good. And also forget uh, that I made it an extra square foot too big, if that is an extra square foot. So it's a four by four rather than a three by three. A little bit rough, because I went to Leeds last night to see Green Lung. Like guitar riffs, so dirty. I think I actually came back from the gig with an STI. Then Clutch turned up. Clutch actually played Escape from the Prison Planet because I only know band songs uh, through their respective soundtracks, which was Escape from LA. I thought I only ordered 50 LEDs. I've ordered 200 LEDs. Oh! My whale is here though, and that is the size I wanted it to be. We can have that dead on the beach. Nice. Took all my knives home to assemble the Frontier Wargaming paint station. So this is my weapon of choice to carve all the foam for the board, unless I want to walk back into town for 15 minutes. We can make it work. Okay, coffee. So I'm going to let you guys in on a little trade secret, pretty much exclusive to the UK. Getting decent foam is fucking expensive. Insulation foam, yeah, sure, quite pricey, but we don't even talk about that, you know, the really nice blue and pink foam that you see foam crafters using. No way, not over here. So what we do is when we see a skip full of foam, we hoard it. We empty the skip, we take it all, and we stockpile it, because you never know when you're gonna find any more. Problem being, I've been coexisting with a shitload of foam for over a year, and I'm gonna see if I can use all of it on this board, get it all gone, and get some space back in my life.
Also doing some subtle changes to workflow when I'm working on this board. Firstly, I'm having a go with these DZO Zinni zooms, and I have no idea why we got white lenses, because they're going to get so dirty on these projects, but they are lovely. And secondly, I'm switching to brown plaster, because white plaster is a complete shit bitch to film properly. What's up guys, Tony D here, and just like the creeping sense of dread from Cosmic Horror, I'm back in perpetual forward motion. What? <laughs> huh, smell that? Something smells fishy. Eh, just a crumbling harbour town of Dunsmouth behind me. But you know what doesn't smell fishy? <laughs> the countless deals from today's sponsor, Waylon Games. Now let me tell you something guys, even though the season of giving has come and gone, Wayland Games gift lists have not. Whether you're looking to buy for someone else, yourself, or just looking for a little inspiration into a corner of the hobby that you've not yet been a part of, these highly tailored lists have something for everybody. Miniatures, paints, paint stations, brushes, board games, and accessories, it's all here guys, rocking and ready for you to peruse. But hey, that ain't all. Aside from being one of the UK's largest online stockists of Warhammer, Wayland Games also packs a Tyson in his prime knockout punch of crazy first party miniatures and scenics. Forward motion. See this? Straight out of the box that way, baby. And that fishing shack over there? Come on, he woke up like this. That's right, a full range of first party MDF kits that kicks the competition to the coil. And let me tell you something, there ain't nothing to this about dystopian wars, little boats blowing each other to bits in one 200 scale. And don't be missing my point when I say that Mythos is going to be the hottest game of 2023. Me and D-Dog are all about them skirmishes. Ho ho ho, all of this and more. So visit waylandgames.co.uk today to experience their amazing bargains and earn loyalty points with every purchase. A red penny. So I have spent the afternoon thus far um, building my least favourite things, which are MDF kits. And usually they're my least favourite things. However, in this instance, uh, they definitely get a fucking pass because these are probably the nicest MDF kits I've used. When I think it was Foreground went out of business, I debated buying all of their Wild West stuff because their MDF is pre-colored, which means, you know, you get multiple different colored MDF sprues and then you put them together and then you get two-tone, three-tone, four-tone buildings. And War Cradle have kind of uh, preemptively picked up on that and done their own take on things. Yeah, I think I'm probably not even gonna have to paint them. So that's nice. I will just tune the color scheme on the board around them somewhat more. They're all kind of desaturated pastel-y uh, reds and greens, browns. So I think that will that will be enough. The only problem I have is that because the board is so large, uh, it's, it's fucking huge. While it's still wet, I can't really move it. And thank fuck I put some handles on there to maneuver that thing. It's like shifting a fucking wardrobe in front of the radiator, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> The, the good thing about these War Cradle kits, other than the fact that they were sent to me for free, which is always great, um, is that each thing comes with a little bit of accessorization. So, these two little fishermen's huts, which are identical, come with crates. There's lots of crates. There's like 10 crates there, and I love crates. I'm a, I'm a 90s PC gamer kid, and all level design back in the day was just fucking crates. I'm gonna have some static buildings, which have the roofs attached and there will be some, I guess, action buildings where you can take the roof off, the doors open, you can go inside. Some of them will have LED lights in. Right, I have 10 more buildings to build. I'm gonna go do that. Once I was done building all of the kits Wayland and War Cradle sent me, my fears of not being able to actually fill the board were set aside. I probably would have liked a more claustrophobic urban vibe, but I think there's a nice balance to be had with what we have, and that's just my fault for making the board too big. 
LED wise, some lights are going to be visible like in world lights. And thusly, I'm not too worried about wires being visible. This is a 1920s shanty town after all. One of the hardest things about this board is that it's got so much stuff going on. Every time I tick something off the to-do list, there's more and more and more. Next up is this quick and crunchy red brick seawall thing. Most fantasy stuff I've done is big chunky grey stone, which is easy to do, but this red brick stuff is a little bit more intricate. Same principles apply, of course, but there's just more lines to draw more lines to draw and way more lines to draw. After sealing, spraying and a couple of different gradients, I'll pick out a few of the bricks to mix things up color wise and I'm going to dull them down to complete oblivion later on with a global wash. Oh. So I took a little breather, a little palate cleanser, uh, and I did something else for a little while, which is why this has been delayed. I mean, not delayed for you because most of you didn't know this was happening, uh, but I did my, my Titan in a day recording and painted a, a Titan in a day, basically, and finished that off. Uh, this motherfucker, primarily the holdup has been specific parts that I wanted, and I've wanted the specific parts since. I first thought of the board idea. You could be more... Oh, fuck, on me. Uh, yeah, when I made my orders for all the parts, everything was supposed to arrive about a month ago. Uh, everything did, apart from these specific street lights. And according to the shipping and tracking, they'd just been sat in a warehouse for um, three and a half weeks, not moving, not being picked, not being doing anything. So I thought, well, I, I've got to fucking finish this thing. So I ordered them again from the only place in the UK that had them. They had the website listing the wrong way around with a different kind of lamp. That's why I had to take a gamble. They thankfully turned up the other day, along with the ones that were shipping international from the actual manufacturer and supplier. Because these are wired LED lights, the wires need to go under the final layer of ground cover, which has meant that I have had to wait for them to arrive so that I can just carry on with this thing. It does mean it's about 20 kilos lighter because it's dried up a bit. Not much lighter, <laughs> as we just saw. But yeah, now that means I can just crack on and get back on with things. So my next step is to hot glue everything where I want it to be. And then tomorrow I can anchor that down with the homemade sculptor mold. I need to buy some more plaster on the way to work tomorrow. Don't let me forget. There's, there's been like four days of work left to do on it. I've just been waiting for those fucking lights. So, with the fucking lights in mind, it only just dawned on me how fucking angry I've been for the last two weeks for these bastard lights.
So with the majority of the lighting set in place and having to manually insulate the street lamp wires because reasons, I'm carving trenches to bury the wiring. Once the wiring's all laid in, they get temporarily held down with hot glue. This gives me an idea of where everything can sit and where I can set up my final resting place for the battery pack to hide. I'm taking the time after every big process to test run the lights to make sure I haven't screwed anything up or haven't shorted anything out. And nope, they work just fine. It looks pretty chaotic now, but by the end of the day, you won't be able to see any trace of the wiring. Thank God. You guys know my pucker approach to ground textures by now. Trade standard PVA. The big gauge shit goes down first, followed by normal sand that I got from a beach, and lastly topped off with some tile grout, either sieved on or thrown on. I found this method gives me a lot of variation in textures but keeps everything looking to scale and the adhesive properties of the tile grout basically turn the surface layer, once it's sealed with ISO and PVA, to concrete. Extremely durable for gaming. Okay, so, fuck, where am I? So, it is Tuesday morning. Spent yesterday on the Patreon stream painting up some Masters of the Universe Battleground miniatures, which was very nice to sit and paint something that wasn't work. And I'm feeling pretty positive about this board now. The wiring is on, the wiring's covered up. We've got ground cover on, this is amazing. I think all I need left to do this week is to stiff brush all the scatter, the cover that's on top to see what's loose, what's going to come off, slap a coat of paint on it today, and probably while that paint is on, I'll also do another coat of PVA because the paint needs to dry overnight. I might as well put the PVA on as well to seal it down. Uh, yeah, apart from the painting and putting all of that really nice Mantic furniture on, I think there's just a resin pour to do after that. And then we're, then we're golden. So yeah, I'm going to shut the fuck up and crack on because it is Christmas soon. And this was meant to be out last month, so. Fuck! Painting boards for me is always on the home stretch, well, obviously, and often takes the least amount of time to do. Once a base coat is down, it's just kind of all about stippling, overbrushing and dry brushing for me. I tend to let more recessed areas sit with the base coat of black or dark brown or near enough, and work my way up to lighter stuff on the raised areas to simulate environmental weathering or you know, light values. This paint job came out looking a lot chalkier than expected, but I did some tests with gloss varnish in little patches, and it actually helps to sell it looking coastal and wet and rained on and miserable. So maybe I'll go back and do that later on. Now let me introduce you to my good friend Reindeer Moss. I don't think it's actually moss, or reindeers. I found this in a garden centre for cheap, and I'm going to use it to make seaweed. K 
caking it in a mixture of watered down PVA and black paint, this stuff is going to add some much needed additional texture to the board. But it's going to keep in with the existing dower colour scheme. I didn't fancy, you know, black washing tufts, so this stuff is going to make up for that. Seaweed and crusty thorny bushes made in about 10 seconds, you can't really go wrong with that. With the board looking ready, it's time to cover up half of the detail that we just put all that effort into with a resin pour. I've got my edges sealed off with laminate flooring and Liquitex gel. Not sure exactly what Dyne Epoxid Hards translates to, but to quote every useless Amazon review for anything ever, I'm going to guess it does exactly what it says on the tin. Working with any resin for the first time usually means figuring out what it likes, what it doesn't like, how fast it cures, whether it goes crazy upon adding paint or pigment to it, or whether it's just complete garbage and it's going to ruin your project. So it's always best to just throw it on the final project without any testing and hope it doesn't destroy all your hard work. Right. Waves, I have got a pot of Woodland Scenics water texture knocking around, but it is a stupidly small pot like I thought they were joking when it arrived, and from me to you, it is a bit too expensive to really endorse on a project this size. It is great stuff, but I just don't simply have enough, and it wasn't right for me at the time. So we're going to go for the tried and tested clear fix. This stuff is £9 a tube, and this whole beach front took about a tube and a half to do, which is great value. My go-to method is to lay down in you know a very vague formation for water surface and then I spread it out thin and constantly keep spraying 99% proof isopropyl on it to soften the edges. My boy Luke says you can also use white spirit for you know a better and you know, more malleable effect but I didn't have any stuff that wasn't already covered and you know completely mixed with enamel washes so I use this stuff instead. And keep teasing the clear fix into shapes or textures that you want. It normally takes about half an hour to go off, but with the ISO you get a bit more working time. And, you know, keep adding the ISO. I've done tests with rubbing alcohol in the past, and I do not recommend it, as water makes this stuff just go pure white, which we don't want. Previously, I've experimented with adding snow flock to the clear fix to make foam for the waves, but to save time and effort here, I have just stippled on some white paint for the wave crests. Once it's cured, and only once it's cured, I hit the water with gloss varnish and some of the shoreline with gloss varnish to make the tackiness go away, and you know, it means I can dust and clean this stuff in the future. And there we have it, a gloriously interesting Lovecraftian board for Mordheim, Malifaux, Mythos, Moonstone, whatever grim dark fantasy that you fancy. I'd like to give a huge thanks to my very patient Patreon community, who've essentially witnessed me having multiple meltdowns in real time over this board. You guys are an awesome community, and thank you for making it possible for me to make videos like this. And also a big thank you to Wayne and Games for their eternal patience. Not only did they supply a lot of the stuff for this board, and they obviously sponsored this video, and gave me a lot of slack in getting it done after multiple delays. And I will see you guys next time for New Year, New Army. Cheers, I'm out of here.